Treasury Department saying that the U.S. will hit a cap on how much money it can actually borrow as soon as tomorrow. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says that she can use extraordinary measures to pay the bills, but only until June. So Republicans they say in their refusal to raise the debt ceiling unless Congress and the White House agree to deep spending cuts that the Republicans want. ABC News' Elizabeth Schulze and ABC News business reporter Alexis Christophorus join us now with more. So, Elizabeth, Republicans, you know, this is, uh, this is their Alamo right now. They have decided to, to make this the battle uh, of their newly, new power in the House of Representatives. Uh, they want the White House to agree to spending cuts that really have nothing to do with the debt ceiling. Can you explain why and, and what they're trying to do here? Right, Terry. So the debt limit has to do with the government's bills that it already owes. And Republicans are talking about spending cuts for future budgets. So these really are kind of different topics. But think about the debt limit this way. It's $31.4 trillion. The government borrows money to finance its operations in the same way that you or I might borrow money using a credit card to buy things. We have a limit on that credit card. The government has a limit on how much money it can borrow. And ultimately, that limit continues to get raised. But at a certain point, if that limit isn't raised, there's a risk that the government could default on its debt. And that's what the Treasury Secretary is now warning about, saying that we're getting close to that $31.4 trillion number, that these extraordinary steps are going to be taken over the next couple of months to basically buy some time for Congress to try to reach a deal so that they can raise that limit, suspend that limit, get rid of it, something so that the government can keep paying the bills that it already owes. But you're right, this is a very different story than it comes down to the future budgets, the future spending of the government, that's a different process. So Congress passed the $1.7 trillion spending bill last month, Elizabeth, avoiding that government shutdown. So let's just talk about the difference between the two here. Right. So that is the government's budget. When we think about the things that the government spends its money on, it's, uh, fine, it's Social Security, it's Medicare, military salaries, it, it pays tax refunds. This is a ginormous chunk of the U.S. economy. And basically, every year, the, the Congress passes a budget, and that's where they could negotiate spending cuts or changes to taxes. You know, at the end of the day, the government does not bring in enough revenue through taxes to make up for how much money it owes. So that's why it runs a deficit. That's why we see this big debt number, guys. All right, Alexis, that, that's politics. It's Republicans and Democrats. Republicans have voted uh, three times during the presidency of Donald Trump to raise the debt ceiling. They don't want to now. But how concerned should ordinary Americans, consumers, investors uh, be right now about this standoff? Well, people definitely want to be aware of what's going on, but I don't think it's time to panic. I mean, we heard uh, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen say she would take these, quote, extraordinary measures to make sure that the government can continue to pay its bills until at least June. So we're not near uh, the, the possibility of, you know, going over the debt limit cliff, if you will, right now. But if that were to happen, um, economists use the word catastrophic, and I don't think that that's a, a stretch here. I mean, we could see the stock market plunge. We could see the government stopping payments for things like Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, SNAP, the food program, uh, the government will have to make very hard decisions. Who do they pay? Who do they pay first? Bondholders, those who hold Treasury debt right now? Do they pay people on Social Security or federal workers? Also, you know, a, a note on bonds. A, a lot of Americans hold bonds, a Treasury debt, and if the government defaults on that debt and doesn't pay those investors in a timely way or at all, um, lots of luck finding people who want to invest in the government going forward, or they're going to say, look, the risk is so high, we want a really big interest rate if we're going to give the government our money. Again, these are um, catastrophic events that we're nowhere near right now, but they are a possibility if the government cannot come to some sort of a conclusion in the coming months. So Alexis, let's talk about how we're, we're spending our money. This new data that you talked about showing retail sales f fell 1.1% in December as Americans actually cut back on their spending. And then sales also fell in November, highlighting how inflation impacted the holiday shopping season, right? So what does this report tell us about inflation and, you know, how we're spending or not spending? 
for all, such a long time, I feel like we've all been talking about how consumers have been so resilient in the face of high inflation and higher borrowing costs. It, it seems like it's starting to catch up with all of us. Uh, so we saw in the month of December, again, that critical holiday shopping time, people started to pull back for the second straight month. There on your screen, you can see areas where we did that. Electronics and appliances down more than 1%. Furniture off big. Department store spending down more than 6.5%. We also bought fewer cars. That's more a correlation with interest rates going up. It got more expensive to finance that car. So we're starting to see people being more thoughtful about their purchases. Of course, we still have a strong job market. Wages are going up, not keeping up with inflation, but they are at least higher. So folks that were starting to hunker down and say, you know what, if the economy is going to slow down and there's the possibility of a recession here, I'm going to adjust my spending. So it's a tricky time uh, in the economy as the Fed tries to bring the economy, cool it off in for a soft landing, just the right time for a major fight over the debt limit, right? Uh, Elizabeth and Alexis, <laughs> thanks very much.